press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hi everyone. In the last session, we discussed the characteristic features of uh, living organisms. So today I would like to discuss diversity in the living world. So diversity means what? It is a variety. Diversity is the variety. So we know that uh, the varieties of living organisms existing on the earth, right? So if you simply look around, you could be able to see uh, varieties of uh, plants, different ty types of plants like uh, small sized plants, we call it as herbs, medium sized plants, shrubs, and also uh, you could be able to see large trees and uh, different types of animals like uh, birds and also insects and pet animals. And still there are some other organisms which we cannot see with our naked eyes. So those can be seen only with the help of uh, microscope. We call it as uh, microorganisms. Okay, so uh, if we increase, so all these different uh, kinds, types of plants, animals, and other organisms, so that uh, occurrence of this wide variety of living organisms that are uh, existing on the earth, no, we call it as a biodiversity. Suppose if we increase your area of observation, so the number of organisms you see also increases. Suppose if you visit a dense forest. So you could there uh, you could able to see a wide variety of different types of uh, uh, plants you could able to see and uh, different types of animals also is you can see okay so like that uh, if we increase as the export area increases the number of organisms you see also increases so each kind of a plant or animal is called as what species so each kind of plant or animal is called as what species. And all these different types of plants, animals, and also uh, other organisms that existing on the earth is called as what? Biodiversity. So what is biodiversity? Biodiversity. So biodiversity means it is the occurrence of, occurrence of different types of different types of plants currents of different types of plants animals different types of plants animals and other organisms and other organisms so we uh, in other words, you can say biodiversity is the occurrence of a wide variety of life forms. So it is the occurrence of a wide variety of life forms on the earth is called as what? Biodiversity. So it is the occurrence of different types of plants, animals and other organisms. In total, uh, in general, we can say a variety of life forms that are existing on the earth is called as what? Biodiversity. Okay. So according to IUCN, so IUCN stands for, what is IUCN? It stands for International, International Union of Conservation of, Conservation of Nature and, Nature and Natural resources. So IUCN stands for International Union of Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources. So according to IUCN, until now, uh, the noun species, the noun and described uh, species so far is around 1.7 to 1.8 million. 1.7 to 1.8 million. So according to IUCN, the number of noun and described species is about 1.7 to 1.8 million. There are millions and millions of plant organisms are there, millions and millions of uh, species are there. So out of which only uh, 1.7 to 1.8 million species of plants and animals uh, and other organisms that have been described uh, so far. Descri they have been discovered and described so far. 
and still there are a uh, number of organisms a millions of organisms which are not yet discovered and described so every year 15000 every year a uh, 15000 organisms are discovered every year 15000 organisms discovered so as we uh, explore the new area so the number of uh, varieties of organisms are found right so still there are so many species of plants and animals are there they are not yet discovered and described so the biologists know so they while studying the organisms the biologists will follow uh, certain uh, definite uh, principles or criteria while studying uh, the living organisms okay like uh, the very first thing is the identification so identification of by knowing uh, what type of uh, plant or animal it is by knowing its features one should identify so after identification the next uh, procedure is a uh, naming naming means assigning or giving a particular or specific name to each identified organism and then classification so classification means what uh, assigning uh, that particular organism uh, placing of that particular organism in their respective group and all okay so every biologist they follow a certain uh, criteria or principle while studying the living organisms so that includes a uh, identification or nomenclature and the classification okay so let us discuss what is binomial nomenclature binomial nomenclature binomial uh, nomenclature that means uh, see uh, as we uh, know as we uh, as i said there are millions of plants and animals are there existing on the earth right we call uh, the plants and animals in our area by local names like uh, that uh, we'll call a uh, dog a uh, cat Uh, this is rose plant and this is touch me not plant like this we, like that we will call okay so these local names are not uh, unique okay so they vary from place to place they differ from place to place suppose uh, for example as i said touch me not plant suppose in davangere we call that particular plant as uh, touch me not but the same plant in other city it is called by different name so same plants and animals were called by uh different names in different places and different plants and animals are called by the same name in the different places so that leads to what confusion so that would lead to confusion so it is not uh, so one uh, could not able to recognize a particular type of uh, uh, plants and animals correctly so that the scientist they were thinking that uh, they were thinking of need to standardize the names of living organisms so that uh, particular uh, animal or plant is called by the same name so in order to avoid confusion so if the same plant is called by different names in different uh, places so that obviously it leads to confusion no to avoid such things so there is a need to standardize the names of living organisms so by thinking that the scientist uh, they thought of uh, giving a uh, particular name to each and every organism so that that particular uh, plant or animal or particular any species they can be called by the same name all over the world okay so uh, universally uh, in regard to that that internationally accepted uh, system of naming the living organisms was generated so to avoid the confusion so if uh, the particular plant and animal having if it is having its own name its specific or unique name so the, its recognition will be uh, very easy okay so that it can be uh, recognized and it can differentiate from others so in regard to that uh, method of uh, naming the living organism 
So assigning or giving a particular uh, naming to the living organism was uh, generated. So that is called as what? Nomenclature. Okay. So what is nomenclature? Nomenclature. So nomenclature means it is the signs of giving or uh, providing the signs of providing a definite and definite and proper name to the living organisms okay so what is nomenclature nomenclature is nothing but naming of living organisms with a specific name okay so that one can identify one can recognize uh, it uh, particular plant or animal and uh, they can differentiate uh, it from one another so nomenclature means what here it is the science of providing a definite and a proper name to the living organism so it is a science of providing a uh, definite uh, name and a proper a particular name to the living organism so that is called as a nomenclature so before assigning uh, any uh, particular specific name to the living organism so one should know its kind one should know its future so that uh, one can identify or one can uh, recognize okay so one can identify it uh, in each and every part of the world so that is called as what identification okay so the very first thing the biologists follow uh, while studying the organism is the identification then naming and then the class uh, classification okay so you we'll come to know what is nomenclature nomenclature means so <coughs> to avoid uh, the confusion uh, because of that uh, the <coughs> local names were lead, uh, leading to confusion no so that's why to avoid such confusion so an internationally accepted uh, system of naming the living organisms that came into existence so that specific uh, naming the, of the living organisms with a specific name that is called as what nomenclature so there are certain uh, rules and recommendations while naming uh, any living organisms so they are set up uh, in uh, like icbn iczn and all let us see what are rules rules and recommendations of rules and recommendations of nomenclature rules and Uh, icbn icbn stands for international international code for botanical nomenclature international code for botanical nomenclature see the rules of assigning uh, the rules of providing or giving a scientific name to a plants were set up in were given in the icbn so that stands for international code for botanical nomenclature so similarly for animals that is the rules for scientific naming of the animals were set up in iczn so iczn stands for international international code of zoological
nomenclature. So ICZN stands for International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. So the rules and recommendations for assigning a uh, particular uh, name to a uh, scientific name to a uh, plant and animals were set up in ICBN. For plants, that is International Code for Botanical Nomenclature and the rules of assigning a uh, name, particular scientific name to uh, animals was set up in International Code of Zoological Nomenclature. So, you have to remember what is ICBN and uh, long form of ICBN and ICZN, okay. And uh, all biologists should follow the rules or the principles or the procedures, okay. Uh, while assigning a scientific name, while assigning uh, any name to a particular uh, organism, one should follow the rules and as well as the procedures, so which are set up in the ICBN and ICRZN, okay. Then, so in regard to that, uh, the most accepted system of uh, naming the living organism uh, came into existence, that is what uh, the binomial nomenclature. Okay, so this binomial nomenclature was developed by so this method was found to be uh, very easy to understand and follow. So, the, and this is the most accepted uh, system of naming the living organisms that is binomial nomenclature binomial binomial nomenclature okay so this binomial nomenclature was developed by Carolus Linnaeus Carolus Linnaeus he developed uh, the binomial nomenclature so what is binomial nomenclature then? So, bi means what to? Nomial, naming of organisms. Nomenclature is naming of organisms. So, naming of living organisms with two scientific names. So, that is called as what? Binomial nomenclature. So, it is the scientific method of, it is the scientific method of naming the living organism, it is the scientific method of naming the living organisms with components are two parts. The first part or the first component in the binomial nomenclature it represents a generic name, generic name while the second represent specific epithet. See Binomial nomenclature, so this was proposed by, uh, given by uh, Corollus Linnaeus. So what is binomial nomenclature here? It is the scientific method of naming the living organisms with two components. That means what? So the every living organism was given a single name, but uh, that name consists of two components are the two parts. So, that is why the name binomial nomenclature, okay. So, the in that the first component, okay, the first component or the first part represent what? The generic name. While the second part, uh, second part represent what? Specific epithet. So, <coughs> the first is generic name and the second is specific epithet. See, for example, if you take a mango, what is the scientific name of mango? Mangifera, Mangifera indica. So here, Mangifera represent the first comp the first component in this uh, name is Mangifera. No, so that is what the generic name. So Mangifera represent generic name, while indica is the specific epithet. 
specific epithet. So, band differa indica. So, this is what the binomial nomenclature. So, according to binomial nomenclature, every living organism should be named with should consist that name of the particular living organism should consist of two parts. The first represents the generic name. So, in this mango, uh, the scientific name is Mandifera indica. No, so here the Mandifera indicates that is the generic name, and indica is the specific epithet. Okay, so that is what binomial nomenclature. So this system uh, was accepted and uh, <coughs> practiced by all biologists. So because this was this method was found to be very convenient and easy to understand. So, and this is the most accepted system of uh, bin, uh, nomenclature that is binomial nomenclature. So, who proposed this binomial nomenclature? Corlus, Corlus Lanius. Okay. So, this is uh, one more question. What is binomial nomenclature? Or else, uh, two more question. What is binomial nomenclature? And who proposed it? Let us see uh, what are all the rules and uh, what are the rules of uh, binomial nomenclature. Rules of binomial nomenclature. See, uh, so according to uh, this binomial uh, nomenclature, the biological names, the biological names. The biological names of the living organism is generally in Latin, should be in Latin language. So the names, so what are, uh, what are all the rules of binomial nomenclature? Uh, we are going to discuss the rules of binomial nomenclature. So according to binomial uh, nomenclature, uh, every uh, living organism was given a single name. And uh, that uh, name of the living organism, it should derive from a Latin language. It should either derive from a Latin language or it is Latinized if irrespective of their origin, the name should be uh, Latinized, okay. So it is derived, uh, either it is derived from the Latin or Latinized irrespective of its origin. So that is the first rule. So the biological name should derive from Latin language. And according to this, uh, each and every organism, so each organism, each organism, each organism is given, each organism is given only one name, each organism is given only one name, but that must consist of two components or two words. So what is the first word? The first is the generic name, generic name and the second one is specific epithet, specific epithet. So each organism is given only one name to avoid confusion, each organism is given only one name but that name should consist of two parts or the two words that is the generic name, one is the generic name and the another one is the specific epithet. So while uh, writing the name of the organism, the first uh, name we should write is generic name. So first is the generic name and it is followed by specific epithet, specific epithet. 
so in binomial nomenclature the first component is or the first word is the generic name and generic name is followed by a specific epithet so genus name should written first later we have to write the specific epithet specific name of that particular organism and see for example as i said if you take mango what is the scientific name mangifera indico right mangifera so that is the generic name you should written first and after that we have to written the specific name that is uh, indica so like that uh, we have to write and while uh, the generic name no the first letter of the generic name so man here the generic name uh, is represented by mangifera no so it is the generic name or the genus name the first letter of the genus name or generic name should be written in capital letter it is always written you remember that generic name the genus name the first letter of the genus name should written always written in capital letter while the species name it starts with the small letter so generic name should start with capital letter genus name should start with should start with capital letter capital letter whereas the specific epithet should start with small letter okay and if this uh <coughs> generic name uh if the scientific name is uh, handwritten when it when the name is handwritten we have to underline both the uh, generic name and the uh, specific name separately so that is the next rule so when it is written handwritten the name should be both generic and a specific name should be underlined separately underlined the name should be underlined separately say for example uh, i show here so if the scientific name if the name of that living organism is handwritten then it should be underlined generic name and species name uh, should be underlined separately we should not join like this okay so this will become wrong we should underline it separately like this okay so when it is handwritten it should be underlined separately but if it is printed if it is printed it should be in italics it should be in italics if it is handwritten we should underline generic name and specific epithet separately if it is printed it should be in italics okay and the name of the discoverer or the name of the discoverer or the author the author name as so i can write uh, the discoverer name should be written should be the discoverer name should be uh, written after the specific epithet so in an abbreviated form should be written after the specific after the specific epithet so what is the generic name mangifera indica so mangifera represent genus name indica represent species name so after the specific epithet so we have to write this discoverer name like uh, 
lin in a, it is written in an abbreviated form so this represents uh, that this particular species was first discovered or described by linnaeus so the discoverer name should be uh, written after the species name so all these are the rules of binomial nomenclature see what is the first letter according to binomial nomenclature every living organism is given only one name but that name consists of two parts the first part of the binomial nomenclature the first component of the binomial nomenclature is mangifera that is a uh, the generic name so that is here in this example it is a uh, mangifera it is a generic name and the second component is the species name okay and the generic name uh, should written first and it is followed by the species name and the first letter of the genus name should written in capital letter and the spe uh, specific epithet no the first letter of the specific epithet should be written in small letter and if it is unwritten the generic name and as well as the species name should underline separately okay and the discoverer name should uh, that means uh, uh, here uh, i have written lin so it is i have written in an abbreviated form so that that is what uh, the lin is so this represent what this particular uh, species was first described by linnaeus okay the discoverer name is written after the species name or the specific epithet so that is lin so like that uh, we have to write uh, the scientific names of uh, any living organisms okay so if they ask to write ask you to write the scientific names of particular plant or animal in the examination so you have to follow the rules of binomial nomenclature so you write, you should write the first letter of genus is capital and uh, second letter in the second that is the first letter of species name in a small letter and you should underline it separately you underline it separately understood so this is the way of writing the scientific name of living organisms so i'll come to know what are all the rules of binomial nomenclature okay so according to the biological names should be in uh, it, it must be derived from the name must be derived from latin and so irrespective of its origin either it is it is derived either from either it is derived from latin or it, it is latinized but it is in a latin language okay and every living organism is given uh, one only one particular name and uh, that consists of two components the first is the genus name and the second one is the species name and the genus name uh, should written first and it is followed by the species name the first letter of the genus name should be in capital letter and species name should be in small letter and if the name is handwritten we should underline it separately and the discoverer name is written after the specific epithet so these are all the rules of binomial nomenclature we we'll come to know what is binomial nomenclature so what is binomial nomenclature uh, who proposed it and the rules of binomial nomenclature are very very important for uh, exam okay so sometimes what happens the binomial nomenclature is extended to a trinomial nomenclature so in trinomial nomenclature so the subspecies name is written after the species name okay so the subspecies name is written after the species name so that is called as what a trinomial nomenclature okay that is what the trinomial so here you can see only two names no this is genus name species name if subspecies is written after the species name then it is called as what trinomial nomenclature okay for example uh, i give you indian crow carvus splendens splendens okay so this is what uh, the scientific name of indian crow car genus name species name sp sub species name carvus splendens splendens and uh, that this is what trinomial nomenclature suppose if the sub species name is written after the specific epithet 
so then it is called as what trinomial nomenclature and sometimes what happens the genus and the species uh, name are uh, same the genus and the species name are same that is uh, for example see ratus 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 so this is a common name is black rat house rat so this is called as ratus ratus see here genus name is also same species name is also same ratus ratus okay and one i'll give you one more example naja 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 indian cobra so then if the genus and the specific epithet are same then it is called tautonyms so tautonyms are nothing but if the genus and the species name are same like ratus ratus naja naja then they are called as what tautonyms okay so this is tautonyms are not valid for uh, plants not valid for botanical names but the zoologist will uh, yes okay so like uh, uh, as i said uh, the scientific name of indian cobra is naja naja same genus name and species name are same here so in this example also black rat so the scientific name is ratus ratus genus and species name are same here okay so such a uh, that a species and genus name similar no so they are called as what tautonyms understood this much clearly so Uh, what is a uh, nomenclature what is binomial nomenclature who proposed binomial nomenclature and also uh, the rules of binomial nomenclature uh, what is trinomial nomenclature and uh, what are tautonyms understood okay so i'll end up the session now and in the next session we are going to talk about uh, the taxonomy and the need for uh, classification thank you